Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartia and welcome to Tier 4. Let's talk. Today we have with us Dan Faulkner, Chief Product and Technology Officer at SmartBear. Dan, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks, Sapna. Great to be here. Yeah, and today we are going to talk about you know, transforming software development and test productivity with AI technologies. But before we deep dive into this topic, I would love to know a bit about the company. How old is the company? When it was created and why it was created? What problem you are trying to solve? SmartBear uh, has actually been around for about 15 years now. Uh, it was created and still is headquartered in Massachusetts in the US. Um, we're in, currently headquartered in a town called Somerville, just north of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, the purpose of SmartBear as a company is to revolutionize software quality. So our mission is all about improving and enhancing Software quality, we think that's a, a persistent, global, horizontal challenge, uh, and that's what we're all about. When you say improve the software quality, it, it, it can mean so many different things for so many different people. Uh, one part is innovation, you know, writing new business logic, new business application. Uh, developers spend a lot of time. And then second is the code quality of the application. So what aspect are we looking at here? Yeah, so what we do, um, we have a portfolio of products that we've composed into three broad groups that we call hubs. Um, the first of those is um, a gateway agnostic API lifecycle management platform. So everything from API design all the way through to um, documenting it, publishing it for consumers to use, and then all sorts, all the testing you would want to do around an API from exploratory testing, contract testing, performance testing, functional testing, everything to manage your APIs. Uh, the second hub is around application testing. So we generally um, support the low code, no code type of tester in that environment. And we do everything um, you could imagine in end-to-end -end testing. So functional testing, cross-browser, real device testing, load testing, visual regression testing, um, pretty much everything that you would want to do to make sure your application is ready, uh, ready to go. And then finally, we have um, a, a hub that we call our Insight Hub. And that is all about um, ensuring that your application is performant, um, and we, so we support uh, full stack performance monitoring, uh, crash analytics, error reporting, all of that kind of stuff. And, and long term, we will knit those together so that you really get kind of a 360 degree perspective on quality for your application. I mean, when we talk about modern app development because of cloud native, we have seen so many paradigm shifts that are happening. We talk about the whole observability. Uh, we talk about security, which is no longer an afterthought. It's, it is moving in developer's pipeline. A lot of things are moving in developer's pipeline. Also, we kind of forgot developers for a while. We start talking about DevOps and all those things, but developers are the one who write business application. And if you move a lot of things in there, pipeline they will not have time left to do the the value that they bring to the table is writing business applications uh, so can you also talk about how you have seen this evolution and what impact it has had on smart beer because you folks actually have been around uh, before some of these technology came to exist yeah that's right um, so your point about pushing more and more responsibility onto developers completely resonates with me um, the the sort of the, the trend that we saw that drove most of that was shift left, obviously. And we saw security shift left, we saw testing shift left, um, and we saw shift right. Um, so the idea of, of developers having to fully own the code, um, they write it, they test it, they deploy it, they roll it back, they, they really own the full life cycle of the code. And we completely agree that that has created a burden on developers. Um, and what we believe is that um, even within companies and certainly across companies, companies have to kind of calibrate to how they're going to organize for the type of application they're deploying, the deployment environment they have, the cost of a security issue, the cost of a, a bug escaping into the wild. And so we try and kind of meet people where they are, wherever they are on that journey. Um, what we're doing with most of our innovation now is we are trying to use 
the latest evolutions in technology, specifically generative AI, to kind of 10x the productivity of those non-developer testers. So that as we see this proliferation of gen AI supported or, in, or generated code, the, the new testing requirements for all of that doesn't fall back onto those same developers and squeeze them even further. How you have seen, no, in the couple of years, we started talking a lot about AI again because of ChatGPT, OpenAI, and GenAI. But AI has been around forever. You folks have, I mean, we have been using AI forever. Uh, can you talk about how you've seen the role of AI evolved uh, in, in the process of software development? In terms of um, coding itself, software development itself, I think the step change has been the evolution of these Gen AI supported coding assistants. Um, and our perspective on that is that, honestly, we think the jury is still out about the aggregate impact of that. Certainly, it helps you create code faster. Um, however, it also helps you create bugs faster and it helps you create tech debt faster. And there are some very inter interesting interactions that we're seeing where developers are maybe not paying as much attention to AI generated code as they do to the code they generate themselves. So the literature seems to be pointing to maybe a degradation in code quality and a proliferation in code volume. So on the testing side of things, that's actually one of the reasons that, that we've doubled down on this concept of revolutionizing software quality, because we think we're going to need a new approach that doesn't burden the developers. And we actually think AI and Gen AI is much better suited to the testing task right now because tests tend to be pass or fail. It's a black and white result. Coding isn't. Coding can be functionally correct, but not fit the style of your code base and not take into account the context of your code base. It might be insecure. Um, and you might just have bad practices like discouraging reuse. Um, whereas we, we're finding Gen AI is very tractable. We've used ML-based models, for example, in our visual regression testing product, but we think there's a whole new realm of productivity that, that Gen AI opens up in the testing realm. What initiatives you folks have taken to include AI within your own catalog? So as I mentioned, we, we've had these machine learning-based models for a while. Um, we use them in our application functional testing products, and what they're able to do is um, reduce the need for a person to kind of look at an application and understand um, what's going on. So that might be in comparing regression testing by visually observing two different versions of an application, because there are often visual changes that, that don't show up in other types of testing. We're able to automate that using machine learning models. Um, what we've done with generative AI is introduced um, uh, an approach to using AI in our products that we've called Halo AI. That builds on top of the foundational models, and then we have an, um, kind of a philosophy about how we'll deploy AI in our testing products. Um, so be happy to give you some examples of that, if that would be useful. Yeah, I would love to have those examples. Before we go there, can you also just give more details about Halo AI? Halo AI is um, uh, our approach to introducing generative AI into our full suite of products. Um, it's built upon some kind of core principles. The first is we've made the decision that we're not going to try and build our own foundation models. We're not fine tuning even foundation models. We find that the state of the art is moving quickly enough that the core LLM functionality um, is, is, is not something that we, we're a company of our scale and will particularly change. So right now, we have standardized on using the open AI models. Um, on top of that, we've built kind of the RIP, which is um, uh, a knowledge graph that interacts and kind of acts as the interface between the product interface and the LLM. We then use um, that platform to basically create new types of automation that are useful for our customers and, and add generative AI enabled features into the products that our customers are already using.
So we're not building standalone generative AI products. We are enabling our existing products with generative AI. And because of the state of the art of, or sorry, the state of the market, I should say, in terms of different in pace of adoption of generative AI, um, we're making it completely optional. So there are some more regulated industries or just some more conservative companies who don't yet feel comfortable using Gen AI. So we, we make it very easy for people to, to turn the capability off. And that's kind of the common thread that ties together the specific features that we've rolled out across our portfolio. It would be also great if you can share some use cases, customer success stories, or how customers are using it. One of the most compelling uh, areas that we've introduced this um, is in our application testing business. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, our goal is to take people who are usually non-developer testers and uh, who contribute a ton to, to the industry already, and we're trying to make them even more valuable uh, and take even more of the work off the shoulders of developers. The way we've done that is we just keep expanding the realm of use cases that they can address and automate. Um, so one type of automation that we've introduced is the ability to specify tests in natural language. Um, so one barrier to a tester today who may be less technical, if they want to write test automation scripts, is they may not know, they may not feel comfortable using Playwright, Selenium, Cypress, things like that. Um, what if they could just write down in English what they want the test to be and um, then have the product understand that English and be able to reliably turn that into an automated test? That's what we have released. Uh, that's available in two of our products, one called Reflect, one called Zephyr Scale. Um, Reflect is a test automation product. Zephyr Scale is a very interesting application of it because it's actually a test management product. So you can imagine you have a big database of all these tests that are already written in English. Um, we're able to go through that database of tests and pretty significantly change how many of those can be automated. Uh, so that's just one application is using natural language. A second is we're using visual AI to understand the behavior of mobile, native mobile applications, where you tend to have far less information available to you than you do from a web application. Um, and using visual AI, we're able to quite effectively um, do functional testing of mobile applications, so native Android, native iOS uh, applications. On a slightly more technical note, um, we've also introduced um, Halo AI into our API contract testing product. Um, and API contract testing is incredibly valuable because it can help you discover errors much, much earlier in the process um, than waiting to discover an issue in end-to-end -end testing. Um, but for some people, it can be a little technical to create your first um, API contract test. So we're using generative AI to basically say to a user, hey, you tell us the endpoints that you need a contract for and we'll create the contract test for you. Um, and then give you a, a good starting point that you can either accept or, or edit. So there's just a, a few examples of how we've implemented generative AI in our products so far. What kind of things we can expect from a smart beer this year? Yeah, we've got a pretty rich roadmap um, coming up um, with, with generative AI. There's a, a huge number of use cases across all of our all of our hubs so within the api lifecycle management um, i think it's it's easy to imagine lots of testing environments for example automatically creating tests from api specifications we do that today with with a code gem we do that just engineering um, but there are extensions of that that we believe are possible and lots of interesting um, exploitation of LLM's particular strength in, in generating language. So documentation, creating examples, allowing people to query an API catalog and say, hey, this is what I want to get done, and then being able to create uh, chained uh, API calls on their behalf based on natural language input. So lots to do in API, huge number of extensions in testing, like 
uh, test case prediction and prioritization, test discoverability. Um, so it's a really rich and exciting domain for us uh, in the next 12 months. Dan, once again, thank you so much for taking out today, uh, joining me to, to talk about smart beer and the whole evolution of uh, AI in the software development space. Thanks for great insights, and I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Swapnil. Great to meet you.